The following is paid programming. Welcome to Something More with Chris Boyd, Certified Financial Planner Practitioner and Founder of Asset Management Resources, LLC, a registered investment advisor firm. We call it Something More because we like to talk not only about those important dollar and cents issues, but also the quality of life issues that make the money matters matter. Here he is, your fulfillment facilitator, your partner in prosperity, advising clients across the country, your host, Jay Christopher Boyd. Welcome to the show. Thanks for being with us. I'm Chris Boyd here with Jeff Perry. Uh, Both of us are with Asset Management Resources. Jeff, thanks for being with me. Happy to be here. Thank you. uh, We're going to go a little off the financial topics into the something more. Well, we are live, both of us in studio today. Yes, in the same in the same geography. Jeff, same room. Never mind. (laughs) Yes, not only the same state, same room. So uh, that's nice. It is nice. Fun to have you here. So, um, you know, last night um, we were texting each other uh, in the midst of the big game. The, not, not an F- NFL wasn't, game. It wasn't a, a, f- a football game. It wasn't a baseball Quite game. Quite frankly, the football game would have been more entertaining. I think. <laughs> Probably. So we were watching the Republican uh, debate, the second debate. And, um, you know, as we record, um, we're on Thursday, uh, perhaps on the cusp uh, this weekend, unclear whether we're going to have a government shutdown. Seems likely that we're like rolling toward a I government what shutdown. What the Vegas odds are on the shutdown? Yeah, yeah, it's probably pretty might, close. Might be worth a bet. Yeah, um, and <laughs> and so with any case as it relates to that, um, you know, it remains to be seen. But you know, will there be some last minute um, continuing resolution, or you know, or, I could see that. Hopefully, right or It'll deal. Be, or a deal does, uh, uh, but that's there's a lot to do to get you know you just still have to have a continuing resolution at this point. I don't think you could get everything. Uh, I don't even done. know how, if they're keeping done. them there at this point, right? I mean, yeah, because it's the, midnight Saturday into Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sure we'll be hearing all about that on the Sunday shows uh, this weekend. Whichever, however it turns out, it'll be the subject of discussion. But um, and. Um, a frustration, I think, you know, just that we ha- that we kind of keep ending ending up with this sort of, you know, an inability to reach some kind of a decision. Um, government that government can't work function effectively oh. in a budget process to get the deals done that they need to do. You know, I understand everyone's got their positions and. And so forth, and we had a lot of this just a few months ago with the, the debt ceiling, the debt ceiling discussion, and it is so here we here we are again. It is know? disappointing. During the debate, uh, one of the candidates, I don't recall who, but referenced this issue and said only four times since 1980. So that's not that's yesterday. a long time. Yeah, that's 43 40 years. years or whatever. Only yeah. four times was the federal budget completed a year budget on time. Yeah, a full year budget before October first. Unbelievable! Not it's a, not. It's not. It's, it's wow. It's not just people disagreeing. It's people not doing their job because it's tough to plan a business if you don't have a budget, right? Mm-hmm. It's tough to plan programs in the government. It's tough for entities um, who rely on federal funding, right? Well, I'm not to mention the all military. these people who are going to be furloughed and scares senior citizens. Yeah, um, even though it's yeah. outside of it, it, still puts fear into them. Sure does. There's nothing good about it. No, and the political uh, consequence. I mean, no, does anybody win when the, with this kind of thing? I can't point to a time I mean, where somebody just, came out. People and lose. Said, we There's won. definitely losers in it. You know, it's just I don't know that anybody wins. The American people and the American government system of government is the loser. Yeah. Yeah, but um, I mean, also the politics of it—it's a—it's a losing. It's a good question. Who wins? Yeah. So you can point to the other guy, and everyone's doing a pretty effective job at pointing across the aisle as the the reason, or you know, across town or whatever it is, as the reason for the—it's all their fault. But in any case, I think the average American, uh, even the average informed American, think everybody's an idiot. Yeah. Right. I mean, <laughs> yeah. That's, Let's That's face frustrating. It. Well, in any case, and then, you know, just uh, before we dive into the debate a little bit, um, you know, we were talking about 
um, economic cycles, and we've been talking about um, uh, issues of um, you know just what's happening in the markets right. and so forth and perceptions. And you have to wonder how some of that is working its way into uh, elections. You know, uh, recently in an, in another. Uh, pro segment. Uh, Brian talked about, you know, there's a lot of good things happening, GDP and so forth. And there were some positives. And then another episode, we talked about how, you know, there's things to worry about. Two, and you can make, you can for. make, you can credibly make both cases. Yeah. Right? There's, there's, you know, there's, and so, and I think generally, you know, polls indicate that cons the public, consumers, voters, uh, generally are frustrated. Right. You know, they're not, they're not content with the way the economy is. The voters, and uh, how does that the work economy, into its, which is always you can, like, you know, right there, a, right? That's a pocketbook issues are the it's always first. Our drivers, it's right? The, it's the old saying, was it uh, Jim Carville to Clinton? It's the economy, stupid, right? Yeah, right. Um, right. So the average voter buying groceries. Well, he said it with a much different accent. He did. He did. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure I got the quote right. Yeah, but... <laughs> next, um, next time I'll put the accent in. Yeah. You know, so the, the goal put gas in their car, they go to the grocery store, they see the utility bill. Yeah. And they're not feeling too good, right? Yeah. Brian talked about consumer spending is um heading off the discretionary items yeah. and on the required items. Staples. You have yeah. to put gas in your car. Yeah. You have to have groceries. You have to pay the rent or yep. the mortgage and um They'll get focused on their necessities, essentials and if they're feeling tight, squeezed, they're going to be more cautious about where they spend money. Right. And so is there someone in that? Um, so Biden's numbers are terrible. President Biden's numbers are terrible. And he's trying to use Bidenomics, you know, yeah, across the country, standing and, in yeah. factories and trying to project an image that the economy is good and things are going to get better. That's not what the polls say for him. Yeah. And yet, I mean, there, there, there is, again, it's this dichotomy. There is some data that does suggest there's some, you know, unemployment is very low. Yeah. Know? I'm not rooting for him, but I could, I could sit here and make a credible case as we have on the show that, you know, unemployment's low. GDP's right? high. Yeah, GDP's high yeah. and so forth to make you feel like the economies. But it really is that, um, the the dollar that you know that you're you're feeling squeezed with your money household budgets yeah household budgets that's, that's a good way to put it it. Yeah. it it does come down to that yeah and the market you know for the people who look at the economy related to their returns mm -hmm. their that's recent good. returns you know relatively good this year but um, recently but but you know rough the last couple weeks months right um, and uh, you know look at last year we're not back to highs right you know. Now the presidential election is not this year. Yeah, I think so. There's potential. That's one of those things that'll be really interesting to see right. how uh, consumer sentiment breaks, better or worse. It probably as, breaks with the economy. Yeah, as we well, and there's a lag time to that probably right. too, right? But, right. All right. Anyway, let's let's talk a little bit about this debate. Um, debate number two. Debate number at two. At the Reagan Library, which is a beautiful setting. Well, I, I, I'm looking forward to going there. Someday. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. It's on my list. It's like number three on the list. All right. Um, the way to go. Th that's definitely something for us to talk more about. Yeah. Um, so um, as you um, assess last night, mm. um, who was the winner? So debates not are not just about, to me, uh, and I think to most people, are not about... Um, Winners and losers. And I'll, I'll answer your question. Yeah, I'm going to answer I have it legal too, training, so it might take me a while. <laughs> um, it's about um, changes of perceptions, um, yeah. people making mistakes. Is there going to be any momentum? Right. That comes Is there out anything the... like to catch people talking at the water cooler at the office right. or at the coffee shop? Like, did you see? Yes. And I, right. I think that answer is no. There There's was nothing. No that. game changers. Yeah. I I'm going to answer the question, and the answer is Trump won the debate last night, no. even though he wasn't on the stage. I don't know if you've seen the Wall Street Journal um, headline after the debate. It says, I didn't like the headline, but it doesn't make it not true. Um, GOP presidential candidates fail to outshine Trump at second debate. Yeah, I think that that's that's accurate. Although, you know, that being said, I mean, I think there were some good performances. Um, 
Uh, I think, you know, you're a fan of DeSantis. I am. He had a good night. I think he won. Um, he, he had been so, um, I think, somewhat irrelevant in the first debate. Um, at this debate, by contrast, he really, he had a good night. He yeah. came across well. I thought he uh, had some, some answers that um, were planned and prepared. Oh, they all had planned answers. Christy so. definitely had oh, some planned remarks. The can. Yeah, the canned remarks. There was a lot of that, but, and then, and, you know, even, and like Nikki Haley, who had a great debate the first time, she tried to replicate that by going after a couple of people in some of these instances. Didn't work. It didn't seem to work no. as well. She did fine. Yeah. But she didn't good, keep that momentum decent going. Decent debate. Right. But, um, yeah, I thought it was um, sort of, as much as I, you know, was um, paying attention and interested and, um Overall, kind of a big nothing burger. The game felt like the, uh, the the end of the first quarter in a football game with a low scoring game. Yeah, and you know it's not. It's it wasn't like, exciting. Nobody was in the red zone. To yeah, use our favorite uh, term right, recently, from our recent uh, webinar, That's which right. by the way you can find in our website if yeah. you'd like to. Yeah, the retirement red zone. That's right. Um, so I think the Santa's won on points, no knockouts. Right. So now we're shifting from football to boxing. <laughs> But I think DeSantis won. He did a good job at reminding the people of his successes in Florida, yeah. achievements as governor. The things that people like about him is his success as a governor and that he was able to bring up his military service. He was a Yeah, he did have, officer. get a chance to say, here's some information about me personally right. in a way that was more relatable than he's done in the That's past. Right. It's funny you said that. Um, what people like about him. I just don't think people really like him though. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, well, that's obviously a problem he's having because yeah. before they got to know him, they liked him more. Yeah. <laughs> he was doing better in the polls before he got on the ground. Got right. More familiar. Yeah. And I, I think he's, I think he's the best candidate on the stage um, myself and a, the best potential president, but they do have to like you. So they, they didn't have um, Asa Hutchinson on the stage. He was the, he was the only dropped. one that didn't make it to the second. Yeah, we went from eight to seven. And Go ahead. Yeah, and I think um, we need to winnow the field, uh, yeah, whittle it down going. more. You know, They yeah. asked, um, the moderator asked at one point, near the very end, there was a card on everyone's table, to write the name of the person on the stage that shouldn't be there. They should vote off the island, so to speak. Exactly. And uh, DeSantis led the charge. He spoke up quickly and said, we're not going to do that, which I kind of liked his answer because yeah. it's not up for them to decide who shouldn't be there. But if you were on that stage, Jay Christopher Boyd, <laughs> would you have, what name would you have? Read? Well, I agree with Chris Christie's response, which was, uh, he, he got called out on it because he started to write something down. And it was Trump. I wonder if that's what um, he wrote down though. I doubt it. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I would, I, I, can I put a list or do a, just one? Start with one. Um, the governor uh, from North Dakota. Yes. No, no, which one? From which, where's he I from? I think it's North Dakota. North Dakota. Okay. Uh, uh, Doug. Ber Bertram. 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 Yeah. Bergram. Something like Ber that. Yes, him. Um, yeah. Uh, and not that he's doesn't have good comments at times, he just doesn't have traction. I, uh... I, I take him out of the mix. I, th I think honestly, um, uh, Scott, Senator Scott, um, like things about him, but he's not going to do it. He's not going to get, the, he's you, not going to get the tell that he was trying harder Yes, to get it noticed and it didn't fit him. Yeah. It didn't suit him, I guess. I, I clearly would like, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy off the stage because I just don't think he's qualified. I he agree. seems to have, he's kind of scary to me because he seems to have traction. I think when he really is not got the right answers on a lot of stuff. I think the panel wounded him. Yeah. He, they brought out some subjects that are potentially devastating yeah. to him and his dealings in China and yep. some other business dealings. Yeah. I mean, he touts that's why he should be there. Yeah. Right. But that could work against that him. That could work against How him. How about you? Did uh, What would your list, uh, where would you start? Unfortunately, because I think he's a man of integrity and character, and he did the right thing as vice president um, on January 6th, I guess the date was. How could we forget? Yeah. Um, Mike Pence, it's time for him to go. He he didn't look good last night. He looked tired. Um, 
And I just don't think there's enough voters who are going to come around. If you love Donald Trump, you don't like Mike Pence. Yeah. And if you hate Donald Trump, you don't like Mike Pence. <laughs> yeah, right. That's a fair point. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, he might have um, an audience in um, Iowa where, you know, it's it's it seems like it's his faith uh, and same for Scott. You know, they, they talk about their faith more openly. And I think uh, that. Uh, caucus audience may be more attracted to that than some of the other early states. I think so. But um, but but big picture, I don't see him as a candidate who can win. I, I would say the same about Chris Christie, who you know may do well in um, in uh, New Hampshire, but I right. I just don't think he can carry the Republican nomination. I don't think he's running for president. You think he's just running to take down Trump? I, I think he's running as a mission. Yeah. To be what he perceives. Now I'm saying what I think he thinks, but I think he his, he believes his mission is to be that voice that will take on former President Trump if no one else will. And maybe, you know, maybe that's a valid slot to have for him if that's his mission. Yeah. But we also saw signs last evening at the debate of others starting to call out the president either. Yeah, people saying, started to have a little more spine on this, where they started to, to talk about about the pr yeah. former president. Some just said he polls. should be here, and yeah. then some went into his record. Yeah, like not finishing the wall. Yeah, not having Mexico pay for it. That was kind of funny <laughs> when they were. Yeah, yeah. There was some good. Uh, there was a good line there, there some, with Christie. I think there was, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so forth. Other things that he didn't accomplish. Yeah. Um, the immigration issue, Immigra in general, immigration, in uh, health care. There was yeah. a number of issues. Yeah, the, the deficit, Care Act, yeah. the debt is, I think, one of the most vulnerable things because of where we're at and yeah. things that people, Republicans are going to criticize President Biden for is the growing national debt. Yeah. I think Trump is very vulnerable on that because the numbers are very similar. If you look at Biden's projected um, four years of yeah, increasing. Yeah, it's on the, the same debt. track, right? It's it's pretty close. Seven, eight million. A uh, trillion. trillion. Jeez, uh, yeah. not even million. Seven, some odd trillion, eight trillion, trillion something like that. So yeah. that's where it's, it's going to be comparable. Yes. So it's in the same four year if period. If Trump is the nominee, it takes the issue away as a Republican issue. Yeah. You know, Trump can't say to Biden, you increase the national debt by seven trillion. Yeah, and by the you know, pox on both well, so did houses, you, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It doesn't help. And they yeah. both had COVID in there. Yeah. You know, it can't yeah, just part of their numbers point at yeah. that. So um overall, I think it was a nothing burger, as people like to say. Yeah. Uh, if anybody won, it's DeSantis. Maybe this is a point of reinvigorating his campaign and people saying, Well, maybe he's better than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, could and, could happen, and hopefully a couple of the uh, whoever they are. I think when you get down to it, um, you know, people have to start coalescing. Like you know, you you and I had a conversation about this early on. We did, and um, you know, it's kind of getting to that point. As we, I mean, we had, we still a ways off from primaries and such. Um, you know, they're not in, what till January next year. Yeah, but I was um, in January. Iowa, and when's February for New Hampshire? Somewhere February, March, something like that. Yeah, but. Nothing starts this year. Yeah. Well, so there, there's still anyway. time, but um, yeah, we really have to start uh, s screening down to a fewer number of candidates to get any traction. Some of this is practical because if you're if you're running six, fifth, six or seventh, whatever, however you want to break it down, yeah. where's your money coming from at this time? Because donors, even if they liked you, or had a relationship with you, or believed in your message, yeah. They're not investing in you much more. And a lot of these to get on the stage, you got to get more money. Right. But it has to keep coming. But it's not just deciding, should I run ads? It's can I fly to and bring my staff mm -hmm. and, you know, have an office it's or, an ongoing yeah, business yeah. entity at this point. Because, right. You know, you have to get to Iowa and then you have to f figure I'm going to get create an office structure and personnel structure in New Hampshire and then South Carolina and then Super Tuesday. So you can play in Iowa for relatively low money. The market, the media market's cheap as well. Yeah. But once you start to realize how you're going to do there, you're kind of just throwing good money after bad if you stay in the race. And from a structural point of view, voters need to see fewer candidates to help them decide who they want to represent them. Yeah. As their yeah. nominee. And it does any of this matter? 
that's the other question I don't know if I'll have time for, but well, and and ultimately, um, you know, if I mean it, the whole question of what will be the case with um, former President Trump's um, legal issues, legal, con- yeah, exactly. You know, how the, where's that going to be when it comes time for all this stuff, and uh, you know the potential hazards of you know if he's found guilty on some of these charges i know we don't have time but that new york case of this last week i think is one of the most damaging last week with the um the uh the trump organization right yeah then all the the false that's a decision uh, that's 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 not a a done deal that's not a indictment of a ham sandwich as they say that's after the legal process and i'll appeal appeal and all that sure but we're starting to get into like Findings. findings of fact yes yeah right that that are serious and they ask they present more questions than they give answers to about how deep is this and is it is it more than a political witch hunt yeah it seems to be in most cases it seems to be all right well lots to think about i'm sure we'll all be thinking about it quite a bit over the months ahead Even but if time, time to pay attention yep. all right with that um thanks for listening and being with us if you have any needs for your help with your financial planning or portfolio management reach out to amr We're happy to talk to you about that. Till next time, keep striving for something more. Thank you for listening to Something More with Chris Boyd. Call us for help, whether it's financial planning, portfolio management, insurance concerns, or those quality of life issues that make the money matters matter. Whatever's on your mind, visit us at amrfinancial.com or call us toll free at 866-771-8901 or send us your questions to radio at amrfinancial.com. You're listening to Something More with Chris Boyd, Financial Talk Show. Asset Management Resources, LLC, and J. Christopher Boyd, CFP, provide investment advice on an individual basis to clients only. Proper advice depends on a complete analysis of all facts and circumstances. The information given on this program is in the nature of general financial comments and cannot be relied upon as pertaining to your specific situation. AMR, LLC, cannot guarantee that using the information from this show will generate profits or ensure freedom from loss. Listeners should consult their own financial financial advisors or conduct their own due diligence before making any financial decisions.
Origins.